It's really funny to watch the liberals keep stepping in it these days. And one of the big ones that they're about to step in is the assumption that they can force Canadians back into masking when they go out in public. I think that Canadians are very much over it. And the liberals have cried wolf a few too many times for Canadians to actually take the mandates and requests by the government to mask seriously. I just want to play this quick clip right here because one, I think it's so ridiculous the way that this journalist pitches this question to the liberals. And I think that Theresa Tam's uh, effective, like a call to everyone remasking is completely ridiculous, but here it is right here. Just as a follow-up, I'm sorry to cut you off, but I just wanted to take note, you're all, you're all masking, which is lovely to see, of course, but most government ministers are, are not now. Most MPs are not. Most people on the street are not masking is is there any specific guidance on that going forward at, at this point? Yes, Theresa Tam. So um, it is a layer of protection. We hope people have developed the habit to be able to use masks as needed during the respiratory virus season, not just for COVID, but for the, all the other um, respiratory pathogens that will be transmitted around this time. So I do think now is the time to get your masks ready if you don't already have them. Um, in our own particular context, we certainly in our area, there's been an uptick in some of the COVID-19 indicators. Uh, for me personally, there, there have been cases around, um, you know, my, even my work colleagues. So uh, that's one of the reasons uh, why we are wearing masks today. Yeah, just completely ridiculous. I just want to start off with that stupid question from that journalist. I don't know what publication he's from, but he's like, oh, it's so great to see that you're all masking. That's fantastic. Why is it good to see them masking? Does it make sense for them to be masking? And then Teresa Tam's ridiculous response that, you know, I think Canadians need to get used to masking around respiratory illness season. You mean flu season? That thing that happens every single year for several months at a time? You, you seriously want Canadians to get used to masking for like four or five months out of the year every year. It's ridiculous. It, people should just live their lives and they don't need to be constantly paranoid of respiratory illnesses. If anything, you're making sure that your, li your living standard is far worse having to pay for all these masks in order to just avoid contact with other people. But I think that this just demonstrates how the Liberal Party as well as Liberal bureaucrats have, are completely out of touch with Canadians. I don't think that Canadians are ever going to comply with these mandates or recommendations from the government to mask anymore. And I think that all it does is remind them of just the authoritarian control that the Liberal Party and different provincial governments took during COVID. Nobody wants to go back to that era, but it's because Theresa Tan has nothing left in her career other than the fact that she's the mask and COVID-19 lady that she can't drop the issue. And I think when you see a government who keeps spinning their tires on the exact same issue over and over again, you're seeing a dead government. I don't see Justin Trudeau's liberals recovering from the current polling side that they're in. And it's because of things like this. They can never admit to be making a mistake. So they're only ever going to justify why they did what they did and then keep pushing the exact same things as the solution. COVID-19 and respiratory illnesses are not a significant problem. If they were, if we had black death breaking out across Canada, you wouldn't have to tell anyone to wear a hazmat suit and stay away from other people. If a, if a, if a problem is serious, you don't have to mandate that people take it seriously. If anything, mandates actually pay, they make people take it less seriously because in their mind, if it was serious, they would take it seriously. This is where I think that Justin Trudeau's liberals have effectively entered what is like a death spiral. All they're going to be doing every single year up until the 2025 election is trying to generate fake crises to try and recreate the sort of COVID-19 era of Canada, trying to push people back into being paranoid of things like uh, COVID-19, the Freedom Convoy, right-wing extremism, to see if they can find an issue polarizing enough that maybe they can get their base out to help them survive in government. But I think, again, Canadians have gotten a little bit too wise to the game that the Liberal government and the media plays. They aren't going to take this stuff seriously anymore. And I think that right now all they can do is just 
keep trying over and over again. And just wondering how, like how, how is Teresa Tam not just retired yet? She has nothing left to offer and someone should fire her just out of the sense that we spend way too much money on that woman's salary. Like us over here at the national telegraph, we take pride in the fact that we led to the firing of former AHS CEO, Dr. Verna Yu, because she was costing taxpayers more than $600,000 a year in salary. And I think it's over $750,000 a year when you added in all of her other benefits she got. It's insane that we have government bureaucrats being paid this much. If you are entering the public sector, you are trying to enter a job that pays pretty well, has good benefits, and gives you a decent pension once you've stayed in the position long enough. But these days, we're paying people close to a million dollars a year to be bad at their jobs. Dr. Verna Yu in Alberta was just absolutely struggling to keep Alberta properly stocked up with ICU beds, even though the UCP government under Kenny, to give Kenny some credit, actually gave her enough beds to use. He gave her like funding so that she could technically have 1,400 beds running. And she was like struggling along with 330 beds. Because in my opinion, I think she was trying to make COVID seem like a bigger issue than it was by artificially restricting the resources AHS was using to combat it to make it seem like we were always in a crisis. Because funny enough, every time we hit about 90% ICU capacity, which the triage sort of portion, which is like anything past 90%, you start triaging people and only let them have beds that they have a good survival rate. Once we every time we got to 90%, somehow we found another 50 beds so that the crisis was suddenly averted. And a, everyone give Dr. Verna Yu and some of the AHS bureaucrats a big round of applause. I think that all this stuff needs to definitely be cracked down on if the conservatives take government. Just gut the uh, bureaucracy of all of these just lifers who have never actually shown any competence in their role. It's not just making paranoid super strict recommendations does not make you a serious person. If anything, it makes you an unserious person. Anyone can try and make a situation more than it is and stoke fear and paranoia. It's an actual professional that that analyzes the situation and gives recommendations that fit the current problem. All the recommendations Teresa Tan gave during COVID were overblown and silly, and that proved that she wasn't actually, actually acting as a medical professional. Anyways, that's it for me today. I am very happy to say that I don't think we're ever going to enter the masking era of Canada again. You'll see people in the streets wearing them who are signaling how liberal they are, but I don't think the average person is actually going to get tricked back into a mask this fall. Maybe I'm wrong and you can clip this and show how wrong I am in the future, but hopefully my predictions hold up. Anyways, I have my normal gifts and go legal fund donation link in the description of this video. I'm being sued by a Chinese billionaire. I'm currently winning that case, but it's a ridiculous defamation case. And he's obviously just, you know, pursuing me in court just to prove how tough of a guy he is. It does help every dollar I get to sort of uh, pay for all these costs I'm incurring. Uh, and other than that, I also have the TNT email link in the uh, in the description of this video. Sign up if you want to get our content dr delivered directly to your inbox. And other than that, have a fantastic day, everyone.